What's up everybody? Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We have an awesome video for you today. As you can see here, we got our hands on a Garmin R10 golf launch monitor. That's the Garmin Approach R10 radar-based portable golf launch monitor, okay? So uh, I had tons of people reaching out. We actually released a video a few weeks ago kind of talking about the information and data and what to expect, all right? They actually have a margin of accuracy that they release numbers on, which is pretty cool. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. But today we're gonna give you guys a first look, all right? We're gonna do a quick unboxing, talk about you know what was included with the unit, the software, things like that. But even more importantly, the most highly suggested thing that everybody wants to see is an accuracy comparison. So we're actually gonna take this unit up against the Unicore IXO. All right, I've shown that unit quite significantly in channel, but that thing is in a whole nother ballpark. This is a $599, all right, personal portable golf launch monitor. That's a $10,000 ceiling mounted camera unit, all right? I like the ceiling mounted in this case because this is a radar unit. It sits actually six to eight feet behind the ball and it could have interference of something sitting, you know, in its way. All right. Even if another radar unit was next to it, it could be potential for interference. Um, so I kind of like that in this indoor environment, Maybe nice and clean so we can do some data comparison, but I want everybody to understand $599 unit. All right. So it'll be interesting to see how it compares, but I think the whole goal Garmin set out here was to give you a realistic, you know, hopefully affordable golf launch monitor that can help you at least work towards improving your game and make it fun at the same time. They have the Garmin Golf app that's included. It has like 42,000 courses uh, that you can play all over the place with their you know, kind of virtually uh, simulated app. And then also connects to E6 Connect, which is that full simulation experience. And we'll try to demonstrate that for you too, probably in a separate video because it has its own algorithm too. I kind of wanted to use the Garmin app. That way they have their algorithm uh, controlling the data parameters. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, anytime we receive a unit here in the GSV studio, I think it's always nice to kind of just unbox, show everything that's included, you know, so you guys can understand what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and pop this box open really quick. First thing I have to say is, is the size of the box is small. So you obviously know that this unit is uh, kind of beyond the portable, you know, size. I mean, a very, very small unit. Um, comes with a couple of pieces of documentation there. Uh, looks like there is a carrying case included uh, for the R10, which is nice. Get this box closed up so it's not falling all over the place. Set that over there. Open this up. I like that it has a carrying case and I think that uh, the unit's so small you can almost fit it in your pocket from what I've seen. So I'll unzip this really quick and show you guys. So you got a piece of foam here just kind of for protection. You have the R10 unit itself. All right, very small unit. I mean you can fit it in the palm of your hand. All right, so lightweight. I'll mention right now, this has a 10 hour battery life that they're stating. Um, that is a long time. So if you're gonna take this thing out to the range, um, maybe put it in your pocket for the day, maybe even set it down out on the course, you know, to get some distances, you could do that and you could, you know, put this thing in a back pocket. You know, you have a tripod, all right, that you need to carry around as well that's easily connected via magnet. I thought that was pretty cool when I was looking at all that. And then it uh, charges via micro USB, little power button in the back, um, pretty simple stuff. So, um, and then in the case here, on the other side, as you can see, I believe this is going to be a phone mount that they include. Why do they include a phone mount? Well, yep, there's your micro USB, and then they have a uh, phone clip. All right, that's the clip. And then I believe that this is for your phone itself. Well, that's because you can actually take your phone, all right, sync it up with the device and it will record swings, all right? We probably won't demonstrate that in this video. I really wanted to make this the first look video to give you guys, you know, those first shots in the GSV studio for data comparison. But yeah, you can see that this just snaps right on here and then you uh, can attach your phone and then easily do swing recording. So, um, you know, pretty cool. I like that it comes with a little case like this, you know, really simple to either toss in your golf bag or bring it with you to the course, whatever you're doing. Um, very simple, obviously, uh, simple USB charging, that's nice. Um, and then 10 hour battery life, uh, that, that's a really long time. So I don't think that you'd be worried about supplemental you know, charging and you know, that should last you for whatever you're doing for the day. So um, let's go ahead and get this thing set up and we'll take some shots and show you guys what it's got. 
All right, guys, welcome back inside the GSV studio. We have the Garmin R10 portable golf launch monitor set up. It's roughly seven feet behind the ball. They give you a six to eight foot recommended distance for that unit to sit behind the ball. And we have 10 feet of flight, they recommend eight. So we should be good to go there. All right, the Garmin Approach R10 is a radar device. Okay, this is not a camera device, it's radar, which is, I find it interesting that they do not require a metal dot for short indoor play. Every radar unit that I know uses a metal dot okay they actually can see the metal dot it helps them measure spin this unit is actually estimating spin and I'm, I'm assuming that's why they don't require the metal dot so it's using uh, you know these various data parameters that it's reading to actually estimate the spin number and that's why I want to pay attention to backspin and side spin today uh, in particular just because those are things that are really going to affect your flight especially side spin all right, so um, launch direction obviously is gonna be important, ball speed, all those things, but we really wanna pay attention to that side spin number. Uh, that seems to be a difficult uh, number for radar units to read in a short indoor environment. All right, so if you're playing simulated golf, you wanna practice, you know, whether it be into a net or indoor, that's something to pay attention to. All right, so we're connected to the app. I will say that they, they couldn't have designed it better. It's so easy. I'll go to more really quick and we'll go to Garmin devices. You hit add device, it uses Bluetooth to, to connect. All right, and it goes into a pairing mode right when you turn it on. It prompts you inside the app to pair and then you're done. It's that easy, it's connected. You can go inside the device and look at your battery. Um, we have 46%, but it's a 10 hour battery. So we're, we're way good there uh, for what we're gonna do. You can sync to the cloud, all your data. All right, so all that's available, um, you know, simple stuff. My bag, Garmin devices, downloaded courses, performance stats, course stats, sim sessions, all that stuff right there. I went into settings and I changed to miles per hour, something you might wanna do right out of the bat. Looked like it was in kilo kilometers an hour. So um, something to pay attention to there. Um, golf sim. You have Home Tee Hero. That's gonna be those GPS rendered courses, 42,000 plus courses from Garmin. You can go out and play. We'll do that in a separate video. Data comparison today, we're gonna to be using driving range. It's a 2D range, very comparable to what you see here in the Unicor Axel View software. So you're gonna have a similar trace to look at. I'm not hitting into a dark screen. I'm not using some other type of simulation software. I think it's gonna be really good for you guys to kind of compare traces. Weekly tournaments though, that's cool. Uh, as these devices kind of get scattered across the globe, they're going to be people competing in weekly tournaments. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And then True Golf E6 Connect, as we mentioned, that's that full golf simulation software, either iOS, okay, or PC based, is compatible as well. All right, so we'll show that in a separate video because we don't want any algorithms or anything kind of messing with our data. We want to use Garmin's app to compare the data. Okay, so I'm gonna go to driving range really quick, start training. Um, it's already on gap wedge, I'm gonna use gap wedge. I hit a couple shots to make sure everything was all good, it's reading, all right. Um, and I think that covers everything for the most part. Um, I'm not comparing club data. And then I, did I get someone shaking their head? Well, guess why? Because ball data is really important and I want us to focus on ball data. There is not a golf simulation software I'm aware of that uses anything but ball data for their whole flight algorithm. All right, and it gets a little confusing out there, and a lot of you may know that, but uh, club data is thrown right out the window when you're talking about golf simulation. So they're using their, their carry algorithms, and when there's wind cal you know, calculations and elevations, all that stuff, it's all from ball data. None of it's coming from club data. So this gives club data, I think it's almost as like a bonus, and it does a decent job um, you know, based on what Garmin's stating that their error, you know, margin of error is because it can be several degrees in, on a club face. Um, I don't know if you, you necessarily want to be like fine tuning a degree of an iron or something, you know, knowing that there's a, a, that estimated margin of error, but you know, you could go out and hit 20 shots and know that your club face is always open. I think that unit's, the unit's capable of that, you know, so that's something you need to understand. Um, it's, it's a really nice feature that it has, but we want to focus on ball data today. And if you guys want a club data video, we can compare that too. All right, so we're talking about a $599 device here up against a $10,000 device. All right, I want to make sure everybody's understanding that we're, you know, basically trying to give you a demonstration of its, you know, capabilities, um, accuracy, you know, things along those lines. And I always expect a margin of error in a lot of different devices. I mean, very, very high end devices can even have a margin of error if they miss, you know, whatever it may be. Nothing is perfect, right? So um, first let's start with just a couple simple chips because if you are gonna play E6 or you're gonna go out and chip up on the green using, you know, the Garmin uh, simulated courses, you're gonna have to chip. So let's just do a little short chip here. All right, 12 yards, 
13 yards. All right. I don't know if it's going to be picking up any side spin on those. I mean, that, that'd be, have to be so precise. Yeah, you can see how it has launch angle, backspin, and distance. So it's doing a really good job of just kind of getting that distance of a short chip. I, I honestly wouldn't expect it to do anything different um, because it's just not enough for it to gather. You know, not enough movement. So let's hit it just a little bit harder now. All right, 30 yards. Oh man, 29 versus 29. So I'd say it has its distance down on these chipping uh, chips really well. I picked up side spin that time. Both of them were right. And even the back spin, look how close that was. I picked up club path that time and everything. Um, how about ball speed? Uh, ball speed 38 versus 39. Good stuff. Launch angle 32 versus 32 basically. Um, it's doing a good job on these chips. All right. Go a little bit further. Nice little approach shot there. 84 yards. Oh, 85 yards. Both the traces went left. It did a very good job. I can already tell. All right. 97 left versus 519 left. A little less spin. All right. That's that margin of error that I'm, I'm expecting and, and kind of impressed with here. Um, ball speed 74 versus 74, basically launch angle 33 versus 30. I mean the one degree off, not even, um, good stuff. I mean, good stuff. I, I say we do one more wedge shot here. I can maybe go uh, a little bit harder at it. It's like a hundred yard shot for me. Usually hundred yard carry. Yeah. 97. Okay, so we might have got a little miss that time from the Garmin. No, it's a fast swing. So it's very possible that's why it had a little bit of a miss. But I love that it picked up the backspin. I mean, for a crisp wedge shot, it picked up, you know, similar backspin. It's just that it missed the side spin a little bit. So, um, you know, between the ball speed launch angle, you know, I think a high, high, really spinny ball. Um, it just couldn't quite calculate it. But, uh, you know, ball speed's right there. Launch angle's right there. So these are the type of variations that I kind of expected. Um, you're just gonna have a little bit of variation. I mean, um, pretty darn good numbers so far. You know, they, I think they set out to get this device to the masses as a game improvement tool. It's radar, so it's really easy to use outdoor, but you have these benefits of using it indoor. And I'm gonna, I wanna take the device outdoor and see how it performs. It's gonna have much more distance. I'm assuming it's gonna have a much better opportunity you know, to pick up that data. So let's switch to nine iron. I don't need to do that inside the view software, but just in case it uses the club selection in any of its uh, calculation, I, I think it's smart to, to pick that. So, all right. This is a 140 club or so, 145 if I really step on it. All right, just a tiny push. Looks like just a tiny push. 138 or 139 versus 142. 58, all right, so more spin on IXO and, and not as much right spin, all right? And then if we look at some numbers here, uh, ball speed 105 versus 106, real close. Launch angle 26 versus 27. Um, so really just probably a little miss on the, the side spin, I'd have to say. Um, I mean, launch direction 3.1 versus 2.8. The launch direction was close. I'm going to let you guys pause the video and go through all this. So, I mean, we don't need to make it a marathon for no reason. Um, so we probably need to try to hit a little bit of a draw here and see how it reads the draw. Without hooking it. This long weekend of golf has me tired, let me tell you. Nah, just didn't, just didn't close the face but it'll be another good comparison. All right, 142 versus 135. It had a lot of right spin that time, so I kind of missed that. A little bit of a miss. All right, let's hit one more. There we go. Just had to turn it over. 
It wasn't the best strike in the world. I'm just trying to hit the ball decent right now, honestly. 136 versus 142. And it picked it up a little right again. Hmm. So, looks like I'm having... I mean, the backspin wasn't that far off, you know, but it was off. But it picked up right spin again. Um, don't know exactly what's causing that. We can try to hit one more. I mean, everything else is really close. But... Uh, it's just not, and I turned that club over nice that time. I'm going to try to do the same thing again. A little draw. Yep, I turned it over nice that time. Oh, we got it. It got it. 145, which I expect when I kind of hit it nice with a, you know, closed club face like that. Um, it had it boosted a little bit. It said 153. But 662 versus 1249, it had less spin. Ball speed, let's go to that really quick, sorry. 108 versus 109, launch direction, I mean, right there. Um, so those are some good examples for you guys. So I would say it's picking, picking up, you know, pretty darn good. Obviously, there's that little margin of error like we discussed, um, you know, so you're gonna have to pay attention and just understand you're getting such a good value. Um, dollar wise that you know there could be some misses in my opinion you know there just it could happen and also you know is doing a really good job with some carry numbers and stuff so um, let's see if we can hit just a couple longer balls here this is a six iron I hit that well that should be 180 Ooh, 185. It's a little deep for my six iron. I mean, I shouldn't say that. When I hit it really well, it's 185, but 180. Um, well, it's another miss though. It had it to the right. So a little less spin and it had it to the right. So a little bit of a push. Let's look at the other numbers though really quick. Um, launch angle 19 versus 21. Uh, ball speed 125 versus 125. Look at the ball speed. I mean, really, really close. Um, launch direction. So it did do right 1.3 uh, versus 1.1. So the launch direction is right. This is that number that I was concerned about though, the side spin. Side spin is so important for ball flight. Um, and since it doesn't have the dot on the ball, I just think that unless it gets its readings the way it wants it, let's try to not, oh, it's gonna be tough. Six iron, I usually draw a little bit. Let's try to not draw this. Well, I'll take it. Even if it's a miss, let it read the miss, right? So 170 heavy push makes makes total sense. Um, 167 versus 163. Hey, it picked it up pretty close. A little less spin, a little more spin, because those are estimated spin numbers. That's what you guys have to understand. It's using this calculation of everything. All right. Um, ball speed 116 versus 115, launch angle 20 versus 21, launch direction 4.3 versus 4.2. I mean, it has, you know, launch angle, launch direction. Um, that's why I just want everybody to be careful of the uh, side spin number. You know, it's either gonna be, it's either gonna do a good job and be close, or it has that potential margin of error. So just, just be, you know, be careful, that's all. There we go. It was much more what I was trying to do. Like just kind of like a little, little push. 171 versus 177. Uh, 38 versus 47. And then just a little, you know, side spin versus more side spin that time. More right side spin. But let's look at those other numbers. Ball speed 120, 117. Launch angle 19 versus basically 19. Launch direction 2.8 versus 3.1. So if we could just dial in that side spin a little bit, um, it'd be looking pretty darn good. All right, I think we have plenty to go off of all that. And now it's time to get the big stick out and see what we can do. I have to admit guys, I am, I mean, I am tired. It was a long, long weekend. I played in a member member is what it was. 
27 holes the first day, 18 the next, and it was just sunny. And <laughs> it was a long day. You know, sometimes those events can get slow. Um, but hey, we're here. And I felt like you guys deserved to get a video as soon as I could. You know, the uh, units showed up this weekend and I was like, you know what? We got to do it. Let's hope these drives are even in bounds. Actually hit that decent. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was a pretty good drive. 289, yeah, that's, that's pretty good for me. All right, so a little bit of a push, but the distance wasn't wasn't that bad. 278 and 289. My spin is is usually pretty low. I mean, it had 1450. That was a little more of a knuckleball than I normally hit. It's usually around 1800, 1700. You know, sometimes 16. A little more of a knuckleball than I normally hit, and it had a tiny bit of right spin, and then IXO had a little bit of left spin. So let's look at. Um, ball speed 153 versus 140 or 154. That's real close. Launch angle 149 versus 17 uh, 8. Launch angle is a little bit different. Launch direction, tiny bit to the right, 0.4 versus uh, 0.9. So um, it it didn't have the little draw. And you know what I think? I think that was a little towards the toe. If if I can kind of feel what it was, you know. Uh, the impact was a little toey, little dry. Let's see if I can. I've been pushing this driver a little bit, so it's kind of funny that I started off with that. It's a decent swing, though. There's that little push. <laughs> That's what I'm good for a lot. I hit it hard. 276, pushed it. A little higher spin. This will be a good comparison. So 276 versus 261. 2600 versus 2261. Both had right side spin though. Ball speed 154 versus 155. Launch angle 15.1 versus... So it's, it's, it's reading less launch angle on driver is what I think the common theme here is. 2.6 versus 3.1 as far as launch direction. Let's hit one more. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. You know, um, tell, tell me exactly what you think, what you'd like to see, things along those lines. Um, I, I mean, for $599 for a game improvement tool, everything this thing has to offer, um, you know, value-wise, someone trying to enter the space, I think Garmin is, is you know, giving you a pretty darn good value here. It's all about what your intention is. If your intent, see, that's <laughs> that's that miss that I've been hitting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit one more. Oh, and it had it going left. Yeah, so that means side spin was just off on that. I had that ball pushing from what it felt like. I'll do a good job, best job I can this time. So what about launch direction though? 1.5 or so they both went right. So it was just the side spin number that was missed. But why did it have a 1229 left side? Oh yeah, left side spin versus right. Yeah, okay. Let's hit one more. See if I can hit one down, down the middle here and straighten it out a little, little more. Yeah, just having a tough time kind of releasing this driver lately. I don't know what it, what's happened the past week or so, but that was my miss all weekend. It was this push to the right. Let's get my tempo down here a little bit and get this face released. There we go. It got it that time. 277 versus 266. So what driver is this coming up a little short then? Is what the common theme is? 154 versus 154. Um, spin, that's my normal spin is 19, 18, something like that. It had 26. It had a little left versus it had a little more on IXO. The launch angle was higher again on IXO, so it seems to be a little less launch angle. Launch direction was a little more left versus IXO. Interesting.
All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that little session where we showed you some chips and some wedge shots and some irons and even driver comparing the Garmin Approach R10 portable radar-based golf launch monitor against the Unicor IXO high-end camera-based launch monitor. You know, something to point out that I noticed right away, my first drive, if you didn't notice, I had that super low spin knuckleball and it said it carried 289. I thought about that after the fact and, you know, that's a little far for me probably. I would think that it's, you know, with rollout, I'm getting to 300 outdoor. Um, so I think that you can even understand that a super high end launch monitor, the algorithm isn't even perfect, you know? And so I think that carries a little, little long for where I normally would hit it based on that drive and the ball speed and things along those lines. So that's something you need to consider when you're looking at a $599 launch monitor, it's overall value. You're getting a lot for this, all right? The 10 hour battery life, I think, you know, really impressive. The fact that you can use it indoor and have some fun like we did today, but it has those simulated courses. And then also, it comes with a free version of True Golf's E6 Connect, the iOS version. I don't know if I pointed that out or not. I want to figure I'd, I'd double check to make sure that I let you guys know that. But then you can take this thing out to the range, and I think it's gonna perform better outdoor because it's radar and it can see the ball flying further. So I'd like to do a session if I can before the end of the season to show you guys how it performs outdoor and then you know I think it's like added bonus that you can take this thing whether it's be into your garage into a net or into a simulator and then you can continue to enjoy it and as I showed you that uh, especially for like the wedges and the irons those carry distances and everything uh, are, are, are really good so a lot of value packed in here I'd be very interested to see what you guys think you know I'm also you know thinking I'd talk to Garmin and ask them you know sometimes when I was seeing that opposite side spin I'm wondering if that's a possible firmware update they're working on. Are they gonna consider maybe using a metal dot for a short indoor environment so they can get a little better gauge for that side spin? Um, at least if it's, if it's uh, you know reading the right direction, all right? And you're not getting that opposite that I saw a few times um, because I think our environment was very clean overall. The setup was proper, um, you know, so that we were getting a couple of misses in there. You know, I like showing things uncut here in the studio. Um, that way you guys know exactly what's going on. I'd really like you to comment below. Let me know if there's anything else specific you'd like to see any questions that you have this was just a first look video I wanted to do an unboxing show you guys what it comes with you know show you a quick comparison you know to obviously a very respectable high-end launch monitor so you can kind of get you know a look at how that data compares in a simulator environment obviously that's the majority of our you know audience here on the GSV studio everyone's looking you know to for simulation you know type uh, you know devices software whatever it may be so um, this is a lot of fun I'm, I'm glad that uh, Garmin sent us the unit so we could take a look at it and you know I, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys the GPS courses coming up I'll do a true golf e6 connect session and I'm really gonna try to take it outdoor and then maybe we can do a comparison uh, either to another radar device or we'll use a laser and we'll try to uh, you know measure some distances where the ball lands and obviously you could see the flight outdoor so um, all exciting stuff it's so cool to see where things have gone over the years I mean the fact that we not they now have a $599 launch monitor battery life's 10 hours you know if you just think of that alone versus you know early devices and how long a battery would last if even if it had a battery and then you know what the capabilities are the connectivity to phones you know the the software that they can connect to um, it's just cool to see how things are you know evolving you know in this marketplace so I appreciate you guys watching as always stay tuned there'll be a lot more coming we'll talk to you soon